Hey man, before I start this video, I want y'all to go follow my Twitter, bro. We active on that bitch. Hey, go follow. Get to the video. Alright, y'all. Listen, man. It's been a long, long, long time. I always start my videos off like this. It's been a long, long, long time since I've talked about basketball in front of the screen, too, y'all. It's been about a week. Now, the reason why I haven't been really making videos is because I needed a break because, damn, I'm working a full-time job with the worst hours. I'm trying to make videos for y'all and watch hella basketball. When I get off work, basketball is on and I have no time to make videos or think about ideas or do any of that stuff. But I have decided that I'm going to actually only watch games that I genuinely think that are like entertaining to me so I can just make the videos on them instead of trying to watch all 30 NBA teams. There's absolutely no way. And there's no way that anybody can watch 12 games at once. I don't know how the hell you can even do that. It's basically impossible. I remember the beginning of the season, um the day after the op the day after opening night, bro, there was 13 games on. 13 damn games. There's no way that anybody can watch 13 games at once, bro. I remember at the end of the season last year, at the end of the regular season last year, all 30 NBA teams are playing on the same damn day. I don't know how the hell you can even do that, bro. I do want to talk about a couple things. I don't really have a script. I don't really know what the hell I'm going to talk about today. But the one thing I do know what I'm going to talk about is Russell Westbrook and the Los Angeles Lakers. They just lost a triple overtime game last night to the Kings. And I do want to kind of get to the Kings and Saints because they have been really fun to watch ever since Lou Wong got fired. I'm, I'm just saying, bro. Kenny's happy about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy about it. It's a long overdue. But back to Russell Westbrook and the Lakers, man. They lost in triple overtime. My ass was tired last night. I wanted to go to bed, bro. But Buddy Heald went crazy. Even though he had a really bad, he had a he had a really bad shooting night before the end of regulation. He came up clutch in the fourth quarter. Came up clutch in overtime. The, the Kings couldn't get a shot in double overtime. The, the you know they had the last shot in double overtime, and they couldn't even get a shot. De'Aaron Fox tried passing it to Halliburton, and they ran out of time. I guess they didn't know how much time was up on the clock. But bro, after that, I was like, oh my god. And guess what? Fifty nine seconds left into the game, I ended up falling asleep. I fell asleep. I'm not gonna lie. And another reason why I didn't really watch this game was because the Gonzaga and Duke game was on. I was watching that. And the end of that game took a long ass time as well. But I found my new favorite college player. You feel me? He has the same last name as me. What's his name? Uh, Wendell Moore or some shit like that. I like him. I like him. You know what I'm saying? Number zero. That's the guy. That's the guy. I'm going to be watching him this season. You feel me? Um, but enough of college basketball. Back to NBA basketball. I was falling asleep, bro, and I ended up falling asleep, and I woke up to the Lakers losing. I really wanted the Lakers to win this game so I can come on here and I could tell y'all that the Lakers are actually improving, and what I saw in that fourth quarter is insanely bad. I'm not going to lie. Um, individually, Russell Westbrook has been turning it up. I'm not going to lie. He has been turning it up. He had a really good game last night. He's been having very good games these past four games, um, but the Lakers team as a whole has collective has been collectively bad they've been bad um from what i've seen in the fourth quarter their whole entire offense is basically just give the start a ball and everyone just sit in the corner just the isolation ball the whole entire time i don't understand why they don't run plays i don't understand why they don't try to find the open man they don't do that they have no ball movement it's just it's just russell westbrook dribbling the ball out trying to get to the rack lebron james dribbling the ball out trying to get to the rack it's just the same damn thing and at this point you have lebron james on your team you have anthony davis on your team you have russell westbrook on your team you have a bunch of good role players on your team and somehow some way you're not a winning you don't have a winning record and that goes back to the coaching that goes down to the coaching i think frank vogel needs to put his foot down and actually hold people accountable on this team it doesn't matter if lebron james is on our team or russell westbrook or anthony davis if you don't have good chemistry, your team is not going to win. And I'm not going to lie, Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis' chemistry has been clicking. I'm not going to lie. Since, since LeBron James been out, they have been clicking. Uh, specifically this game and the game against the Pistons. When LeBron James got ejected, that was crazy. And I, I kind of want to get into that a little bit. It was intentional. LeBron, come on. You can't say it was accidental. I mean, come on, Lakers fans. But Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis' chemistry 
has been amazing. Russell Westbrook passing it to him, finding finding him open in the paint, bro. Been amazing to watch. It's been amazing to watch. And Russell Westbrook has been, he's been better. He has been better. Anthony Davis can be better, but he's been having a good season. LeBron James didn't really have a good shooting night from the three, but he was good as well in that game. He had like, what, 11 assists, 10 assists, I can't remember. Um, but the Lakers as a team has not been good, and I think it's because of the coaching. I genuinely hope that Frank Vogel can actually hold these guys accountable and he can um, actually get their offense going and actually run plays in the fourth quarter and like late in the fourth quarter because um, another team that I want to talk about is the Boston Celtics and Ime's coaching, Ime Udoka's coaching. Has, was the same way at the beginning of the season where they just give the guy, they just give the ball to the um the star and then they just try to do it. It it, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. And that's when Marcus Smart came out and he was like, these stars need to know how to pass the ball. And ever since then, they've been having very good ball movement. And since then, Marcus Smart has been amazing. I can't believe I just said that. He's been amazing. He's been very very good. He was good last night against the Spurs, which I do want to talk about. He was, he's been good. He's been dropping actually 20 point games, 15 point games. I don't know how the hell he's been doing it. And he's actually been facilitating the ball like nobody's business, bro. He has been passing that ball and playmaking like nobody's business, man. And he's showing us why he is our leader. He's our, he has been very, very good on defense. I see that he's been very vocal on defense. He was very vocal on defense um, last game against the Spurs. And now I want to talk about that game for a second, man. If you could find me a team that has made a comeback from a 24 point lead and still choke a lead in the same damn game, find it for me. Cause I don't think I've ever seen that in my whole entire life, man. Celtics were not so hot coming off the gate. The Spurs, however, they were very, very good. And I wanna talk about DeJounte Murray for a minute, man. That dude is crazy, bro. He's crazy, man. I'm not gonna lie. He had, what, 29 points, like 11, 11 rebounds, something like that. And he's a guard. He's a guard. The, the, the man plays A1 defense. He is a very, very good facilitator. He can shoot the ball. He can score the ball on all three levels. And he can rebound at that. If he can play at a higher, higher level, he can most definitely be an all-star this year, next year, or the years to come, man. This dude is great, bro. And the fact that I saw him in trade talks or him not getting re-signed or whatever the fuck is blasphemy because the Spurs need to hold on to this guy. If y'all want to blow it up, if y'all the Spurs want to blow it up, they need to trade like someone like Lonnie Walker or someone like uh hold on to Kelvin Johnson because he, he he he's he's very good. I love his impact and I love uh the energy that he brings to the court. I do love him. Um pause. And you can trade uh, you can trade other guys like Katie Bates V up. I know you just got him, but you can trade him. You can trade like you have other guys other than DeJounte Murray. You need to keep DeJounte Murray and Kelvin Johnson on this team. Bro literally rode Grant Williams like a bull, pause. But it was I, I like like why? I saw that shit and I was like, damn, I gotta tell everybody that Grant Williams just got done on bro. Pray for Grant Williams, man. But the Celtics were absolutely terrible. They were absolutely terrible down the stretch, man. Fourth quarter stretch. We were up by like what five um with like three minutes to go. And somehow, some way we do not score a bucket. They went on an 11 0 run and they ended up winning the damn game. I don't know how in the hell we managed to do that, but we choked a lead that we actually got back. It's just it's, it's Boston Celtics nature, man. I don't know. It's it's been like this though. It's been like this since the Brad Stevens era. It's been like this now. At this point, it's got to be the players and their mentality. And this is what I mean by chemistry will win you games. This team was losing Robert Williams. We didn't have Josh Richardson last night. Um, and those two guys could have really, really helped us, especially down low in the paint. Um, Robert Williams is not going to let any of that shit happen. And um, another thing I do want to talk about is Emei's coaching. If someone is having a good game, keep them in late in the fourth, please. Ennis Cantor should have been in instead of Al Horford. It should have, it should have been Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor was our most impactful player besides Marcus Smart, to be honest. Because I think, I think he had like a what, a plus twenty-eight in plus-minus. 
Ed his character was amazing. He was amazing throughout the whole entire game and somehow, someway he got benched. He should not have been benched. This goes back to us saying, if a guy is having a good game, do not bench him. It's the same thing with Jalen Brown. If he's hot, don't stick him in a corner. Same thing with Jason Tatum. If he's hot, don't stick him in a corner, please, please. And you know, Ime Dunk is still learning. And I want him to grow with our Celtics team because that builds chemistry. And once again, chemistry is the biggest, biggest part of basketball. I will continue saying this. And I kind of want to make a video on like super teams and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I might as well talk about it now. Super teams, in my opinion, are dying. I think, I personally think that they're dying. This is just my own personal take. It could be a hot take. Who knows? I don't know if people, uh, I don't know if many people agree with it, but I did tweet out one time um, that the super team era is dying. Basically, if you want to know my definition of a super team is probably like you get a bunch of top 15 players in the league at the moment and you put them on the same team and they just run through the whole entire league, basically. And that's basically what they're saying. You get a bunch of star power on your team and then they just run through the whole entire league. I think that is dying. You feel what I'm saying? Um, many people might, might not think that there is a super team era, but I personally do think there is one. And I feel like it's dying. As the NBA gets better, and as the talent gets there, there's going to be more parity in the NBA. That's just how I see it. Um, not many people will agree with that, but I genuinely do believe that that is the case. And this year is definitely proving it. You have Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James on the same team. Not to mention you got a bunch of good role players around them. And somehow, someway, they're not winning games. Why is that? It's a whole new team. They need chemistry. Um, you got... The team that's on top of the, you got the team that was on top of the league for a while, the Wizards. They don't have that much star power. They have Bradley Beal, that's their star. And guess what? They have they have a bunch of good role players that play that have that play very good team basketball and have very good chemistry. And Contavious Caldwell Pope, you got Kyle Kuzma, you got Montez Harrell, who all played together. They all played together. And you put that around Bradley Beal, and they fit the system very, very well. And guess what? their top team in the east same thing with the bulls they don't have that much star power like they don't have top 15 players but they got demar derozan who compliments their system they got zach levine who compliments their system they traded for Vucevic, who compliments their system and they're a top team in the east then you go to the western conference you got stephen curry arguably the best player in the league i personally think he's the best player in the league behind uh kd and then lebron that's how i see it but he doesn't have another top 15 player near him. He doesn't even have a top 20 player. According to, according to the fucking, according to the fucking, um, top 75 list, this man Curry won a damn championship in 2015 without a top 75 player of all time. So I guess you can add that to, I guess you can add that to his resume. You know what I'm saying? But back to this, he's got guys who fit the role of their system. There was a reason why they got rid of Eric Pascal. He's a very good player. He's a very good player. He's a very good role player. But he did not understand the system. Same thing with Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley, very good defender. Very good defender. They shipped him out. And guess who they got? They got Gary Payton Jr. Who fits their system. And guess what? They're the best team in the league. So that just goes to show that my point is kind of getting proven. But I really, really want to get to the later seasons in the NBA. I want to get to... um like 2023 and 2024 i want to see the parity change i want to see it change man because once these guys get out of the league like kevin durant or lebron because a lot of players want to play with lebron i've said this before a lot of players want to play with lebron so obviously they're going to follow lebron and they get, they're going to want to be uh, alongside lebron james because nobody wants to go against lebron james i mean goddamn, he's arguably the best player of all time you know what i'm saying and you got kevin durant who kind of made it popular to you know shift to teams that will, you know, that you can like bring chase, you know what I'm saying? When he went to the Warriors in 2018 or 2017. Like every NBA team has their star, you know what I'm saying? Every NBA team has their star and it just depends on how you build around that star. But if you have a bunch, like if you have multiple stars like the Brooklyn Nets, you would expect them to run through the league and like barely lose any games. But they're losing hella games. They're, I think they're like what? They've got to be like, what, 13 and 6 right now? It's not really that bad. It's not really that bad for them. But they haven't beaten any competent teams. The only team that they genuinely beat that was competent in like the past like five games is the Boston Celtics. 
they're like three and five against teams that are like above 500. That's not good for a team that has Kevin Durant and James Harden on it. Not to mention, they have well, Marcus Aldridge is a very good role player. They have Patty Mills is a good veteran role player who has been playing very, very good, by the way. He shit on myself if I ain't gonna lie. He's been playing very, very good. And then you got um, Bruce Bowden who's been out. I mean, Blake Griffin was out uh, against the Celtics. But you got guys like this who can actually play basketball and you got big names and big stars, but it's like, you're not meeting expectations. And that goes back to them not having the chemistry that they need. Like I said before, the Nets, they can win games without Kyrie Irving, but they're not winning no championship without Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is that missing piece that they need to win that championship. If Kyrie Irving is there, their chemistry will be back and they will start running through the league. I'm not saying that they'll start running through the league because they have three top 15 players. What I'm saying is that their chemistry was very, very good. And we saw it last year, actually. You need that chemistry to actually start winning games. I feel like very good coaching comes with that as well. And I feel like that's why the Lakers were struggling. I feel like that's why the Nets started struggling in the beginning, but they picked it up. And you're going to see that a lot this season. You're going to see that a lot this season. Some teams might not end up clicking until after All-Star break. You feel me? Because some of these teams are new. The Celtics have almost a new team. The Lakers have a completely new team. The Nets kind of have a completely new team. You feel me? Um, And like these guys that have been together, like for example, the Hornets, the Hornets have basically the same exact team, but they added like, they added guys who complement their system better. And now they're a better team than what they were last year. Same thing with the Wizards. They got rid of guys that don't complement their system. And now they're a very good team this year. Um. Like I said about the Cavaliers, the Cavaliers have been very, very, very underrated this season. They've been very underrated this season. And I kind of want to talk about them before I end this video. Ricky Rubio has been going crazy, bro. He's one of my favorite players in the league, man. He's been going very, very crazy. And I did say that if they can get this, uh, this Twin Towers three-man, big-man lineup, whatever the fuck, if they can get that going, then they will be a very good team. I'm not saying that they're going to be a top team in the East. I'm not saying that they're going to be the worst in the East. I think they're going to be smack dab in the middle. Um, I think I said that in a video. I think I said that in my don't sleep video, but it kind of cut out. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of pissed about that because I did say some very, very good things about the Cavs. And I really want to fucking credit for that, but I can't take credit for it because it wasn't in my damn video, man. But that's all I want to talk about today, man. Um, hopefully... The Lakers can get it together because that's a game that they shouldn't have lost. I mean, you got LeBron James, AD, and you got Russell on your team. Russell Westbrook, shout out to that man. He's been playing very, very good. Uh, the Celtics need to pick it up in the fourth quarter. Cannot lose that game. And that, games like that cannot be lost. But don't stress a loss. Don't overdo a win. Don't over celebrate a win because it's 82 games for a reason. That's all I got for y'all today. I'm out with this. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving as well. And I hope your Christmas is even better.